Good afternoon and welcome to Live at Noon on social media. I can actually say this today that um, we've stopped broadcasting on Facebook. I've stopped broadcasting on Facebook, my personal page, as well as Plymouth's page. Uh, and the reasons for that is um, Facebook, for the last month or so, has flagged all of our videos uh, claiming it uh, violated copyright uh, infringements, uh, and they would block the entire video for the entire duration and then come back in a day or two saying, um, in effect, we made a mistake and we've released your video. So apparently I have no idea why they're doing this. Uh, we also broadcast on, I also broadcast on YouTube, my private page and the Plymouth page. And we've never gotten flagged there. Uh, and when we do get flagged, I know what I did. Um, and I have the option to, you know, provide explanation or justification or, you know, mute the offending passage. Um, I'm moving along too fast. My name is Pastor Bob. I welcome you to this edition of Live at Noon on social media. And... Um, Sunday is Ocean Sunday. We're spending time with creation spirituality. Last Sunday, we looked at uh, Animal Sunday. We looked at the animals in our lives, uh, and we celebrated um, our fur friends. And this Sunday, we look at Ocean Sunday. So if you'd like to join us, you can follow along right here on this YouTube channel, or you can send me a private message, and I can uh, connect you by Zoom or you can even just stop in um, 125 South Pennsylvania. Uh, we're in the lower level at 10.30 in the morning on Sunday, and you can join us in person. Uh, Wednesdays are our midweeks, and we've been looking at mystics from the Middle Ages. And this Wednesday, we're looking at Rabbi Moses Mamonides. Easy for you to say. I will work on pronouncing that better. Um and then next, oh, I guess I don't have that in there. Uh, so this is a this is a picture of um, today. We're looking at Billie Holiday, and um, on the picture on the left is a picture of her two years old. Um, and then on the right, uh, she's probably in her late twenties, maybe early thirties, uh, with her dog. And there's several. If you do a Google search on Billie Holiday, she has several pictures uh, with her and her dogs over the years. Billie Holiday was an American jazz legend, swing music. Uh, she was nicknamed, this I didn't know, Lady Day, by her friend and music partner, Lester Young. Uh, Holiday had an innovative influence on jazz music and pop singing, her vocal style strongly inspired by jazz instrumentalists pioneered a new way of manipulating phrasing and tempo. Now, when I say uh, Billie Holiday, what comes to mind? So I want you to think about that and uh, drop me a note in the comments section. And if you have a prayer request or you just need to say, hey, uh, let me know that too. I can monitor comments in real time uh, using the tools that I'm using. I'm using Ecamm Live. I've been using this now for two years. I'm very pleased with uh, the content capability and ease of use. So on the left is uh, Billie Holiday when she was about two years old. On the right, uh, probably in her late 20s, early 30s. Her first, oh, I need to pull up my notes, don't I? Jeez, you think I would get... So this is her first uh, album. And... Um, let me make sure I get this right. I am not, while I enjoy her music, I am not an authoritarian on her music. So this was uh, her first album. It was, uh, it premiered in 1947 and it preceded 39 singles, starting with Riffin the Scotch, um, which premiered in 1934. And we're going to hear that right now. So. Thank you. 
out of the frying pan and right into the fire. But I lost me a cheating man and got a no count lie. Swipe the old one for the new one. Now the new one's breaking my heart. I jumped out of the frying pan and right into the fire. Lord, right into the fire. So that was um, Billy Holiday and the Benny Goodman Orchestra. You notice that that was the big band sound in the 40s. Uh, and that was also her voice. And she partnered often with many of the um, orchestral leaders. And that was Benny Goodman's um, orchestra. And you could tell that there was plenty of joy and happiness on the dance floor. So joy and happiness is not going to be a theme that's prevalent in Billie Holiday's life. This is, uh, again, her picture as a two-year-old, uh, taken in 1917. And um, that's going to lead us into uh, the next piece, which is God Bless the Child. Um, this is going to be her piece. She had many signature pieces uh, for me in 1967. There was a band, um, dare I say it was a big band. I don't think it was a big band. I don't think you could call Blood, Sweat, and Tears a big band. Certainly Chicago was a big band. But in 1967, they took this tune, and David Clayton Powell, or David Clayton Thomas, um, did a rendition of this that had really inspired me to dig deeper. Uh, and time permitting, we may hear their rendition off of their uh, premiere album from 1967. They did uh, feature this piece in Woodstock in 68. Uh, I was looking for a live recording where we could see the artists present and perform, uh, and all I could find was really um, a recording with a stock image of Woodstock. So this is God Bless the Child, and uh, Billy Holiday will be singing. Oh, did you notice uh, on that previous slide, the intro slide to the uh, let's see, let's go back here. So you noticed all of those um, albums there. Those aren't albums. Um, for you folks that are probably under the age of 50, maybe even 40, those are 78 RPMs, revolutions per minute. Uh, and they, they took the size, they were a full size uh, 12 inches, but you could only put one song on a side. And so that was what was available. And so this album here was uh, compiled much later in uh, time. Uh, it, we didn't have the capability. Technology didn't allow 78s to be put on albums um, because the, the technology that allowed that to do that, 33 and a third and recording, on 33 and a third uh, just didn't exist until probably the late 40s, early 50s. So here is God Bless the Child, and this is Billie Holiday singing with the Count Basie Orchestra. Them that's got 
shall have them that's not shall lose so the bible said and it still is news mama may have papa may have but god bless the child that's got his own that's got his own Yes, the strong gets more While the weak ones fade Empty pockets don't Ever make the grade Mama may have Papa may have But God bless the child That's got his own that's got his own money you've got lots of friends crowding round the door but when you're gone and spending it they don't come no more rich relations give crust of bread and such you can help yourself but don't take too much mama may have papa may have but God bless the child that's got his own, that's got his own. Hey there, baby, make up your mind, cause I've been such a long, long time. Now, baby, or never, I've been so sad and blue. Now, baby, or never, I've been so lonesome too. Now, baby, or never, if I mean anything to you. Now, baby, or never, cause I've wasted so much time. to mine. It's gotta be yes or no. It's either you stay or go. You can't leave me on the shelf. You gotta commit yourself. It's either you will, baby, or won't fall in love with me. I'm gonna call you once more on the telephone. I'll give you till 12 and I be gone now baby or never I've been so sad and blue now baby or never I've been so lonesome too now baby or never if I mean anything to you now baby or never cause I've wasted so much time Of mine. It's gotta be yes or no. It's either you stay or go. You can't leave me on the shelf. You gotta commit yourself. It's either you will, baby, or won't fall in love with me. All right, this next piece uh, is, um, let's see, September of 1935, Paramount Pictures released a nine-minute uh, movie, and it was remarkable in many ways. 
Uh, first, it was a symphony in black, Rhapsody of a Negro Life. <clears throat> it's one of the earliest cinematic uh, explorations of the African-American culture for a mass audience, and it featured Duke Ellington's orchestra, Duke Ellington and his orchestra, performing his first extended composition, and perhaps most notably Billie Holiday in her first filmed performance. It is a one real movie. <clears throat> By that, what I mean is you've seen those canisters, and just like um, that large 12-inch uh, piece of record that we saw a couple slides back, um, you could only put one song on it. The same was true with film. They hadn't developed um, high-capability screening or high-video capability, and so one, one take, nine minutes, was what that video canister could hold. Uh, Ellington's Rhapsody has four parts, The Laborers, A Triangle, A Hymn of Sorrow, and Harlem Rhythm. And um, let's see, Holiday is going to appear as a jilted and abused lover, echoing her own life in the piece titled Triangle. So let's head on over. It's a nine-minute clip. We may not see the whole thing. I may end it after um, Billy's piece.
mother's tale on land or sea was when my man walked out on me. All right, we're going to move on. Um, that was a little bit of Billie Holiday's acting, uh, and it as as we unfold Billie Holiday's li- life, I, I don't mean to be laughing here, uh, but it is interesting to me how much that piece resembled what was going on in her life throughout her life. So, um, one of the pieces of music that uh, got Billie Holiday. Um, made famous, uh, is called Strange Fruit. Now, I'm not going to play this piece uh, because at the end of our time together, uh, I'm hoping that we can turn our attention to the Hulu uh, story on Billie Holiday's life and the actress that um, did a wonderful job presenting Strange Fruit. So we're going to keep moving along, and we're going to go to... uh, Oh, I do want to show... Uh, the next piece here. This was um, this was hmm. on the left is the strange fruit, and on the right is Billie Holiday singing. And this was a mock-up of an ad slick to promote the tune. The tune. Let me make sure I get this right. Um, Bear with me. I don't want to read this whole piece. It's on the L.A. Times. Uh, So the movie, the uh, Hulu movie, is um, the core of the story was all on the table, United States versus Billie Holiday, not the Billie Holiday story. Um, And that's important for us to pay attention to um, because uh, Billie Holiday was probably one of the first uh, civil rights leaders that actually used art form to bring to the attention of all the Americans of just what was going on. So she wasn't just a drug addict or a jazz singer. She was a person that was living through some of the greatest uh, troublesome ordeals in the history of the United States. Um, I want I want to find the yeah here it goes. Holiday's recording of Strange Fruit became a hit was no small feat during a year, pay attention to this, in which the three biggest songs for that year, so she's released this this single, and she's up against these three tunes, Over the Rainbow by Judy Garland, Kate Smith's God Bless America, and Glenn Miller's Moonlight Serenade. Now, you know darn well that um, the business entities within America is not going to promote a piece of music about that image on the left. And yet, it was heralded 
is one of the greatest pieces of music. It was peered, uh, peer reviews praised it as landmark. Former L.A. Times jazz critic described it, uh, Leonard Feather, described it as the first significant protest song in words and music, the first unmuted cry against racism. As author Julie Blackburn, Blackburn noted in her book, with Billy, jazz drummer Max, Max Roach declared it more than revolutionary. She made a statement that we all felt as black folks. No one was speaking out. And she became one of the first fighters, this beautiful lady who could see and make you feel things. Strange fruit, I gotta be pretty high to sing that one, says the singer in the United States versus Billie Holiday. So that was a Hulu special about a year ago. Um, we're not going to hear her rendition of it. We're going to save uh, the rendition from the Hulu stream, and, it, and I'll explain that when we get there. So we're going to move right on to another piece of music. I call these uh, crossover pieces, um, and it's funny that they'd be referred to as crossover pieces, um, but these were pieces that put bread and butter on the table for Billie Holiday, and this is one of such pieces, The Man I Love. Next uh, up is another crossover piece, Now or Never, uh, sung by Billie Holiday. Um, we're going to see, so back in the late 80s, maybe early 90s, Ted Turner had um, worked hard for his studios to develop a colorization process to render color, put color back into old black and white films. So this next piece, uh, Now or Never, is going to be 
the uh, after effects of that colorization. Hey there, baby, make up your mind. Cause I've been waiting such a long, long time. Now, baby, or never, I've been so sad and blue. Now, baby, or never, I've been so lonesome too. Now, baby, I'll never, if I mean anything to you. Now, baby, I'll never, cause I've wasted so much time. Now, baby, I'll never, and it ain't no fault of mine. It's gotta be yes or no, it's either you stay or go. You can't leave me on the shelf. Gotta commit yourself. It's either you will, baby, or won't fall in love with me. All right, another crossover piece titled All of Me. Uh, next two pieces uh, come from George and Ira Gershwin's Porgy and Bess, and Ira is quoted as saying, it takes years and years of experience to know that such a note cannot take such a syllable that many a poetic line can be unsingable, that many an ordinary line fitted into the proper musical phrase can sound like a million. This is Billie Holiday singing, I Love You, Porgy. I love you, Porgy. Take me. Don't let him handle me. And drive me mad. If you can keep me, I want to stay. I'll be glad 
All right, two songs that came from um, George and Iris, um, Porgy and Bess. Uh, that was the first song, I Love You, Porgy, and this one is Summertime. After uh, A year after the opera's premiere, a 21-year-old jazz singer called Billie Holiday recorded a version of Summertime. It would be the first cover of that song that would reach the U.S. charts. Billie was from Harlem, the home of New York's black community, which was at the time bursting with creativity. Black artists, musicians, and intellectuals such as Duke Ellington, Langston Hughes, Louis Melu, Jones celebrated their African-American culture through their works during this golden age. This era is also known as the ha Harlem Renaissance. Here's Billie Holiday singing Summertime. <laughs>
Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right, next up is um, the Blues are a Bruin. So this is uh, Billy Holiday partnering up with Louis Armstrong, Satchmo, as they perform Blues are Bru Bruin in this rediscovered vintage video. Louis Armstrong and Billy Holiday are two of the best true blues legends who brought collaboration to a new level. In one of their most famous performances, they serenade to audiences to the tune Blues Are Bruin. This vintage video recalls their ravishing performance. Uh, Eleanor Fagan uh, is Billie Holiday's real name and was a legendary jazz singer. Frank Sinatra credits her with shaping the style of every pop vocalist during her generation. Although she died at just 44 years old, Holiday left an impressive array of jazz recording featuring her truly profound and beautiful voice. Louis Armstrong was a pioneer in the jazz world. This phenomenal composer, singer, and trumpeter was one of the first musicians who played music for both white and black audiences alike. His masterful playing was responsible for the turning of the trumpet into a solo jazz instrument. The blues are a Bruin as a jazz piece with lyrics that portray the longing for love. In a video recorded performance of this piece, Holiday and Armstrong conversely music, converse musically and through gestures such as facial expressions, Armstrong's beaming smile lights up the room as Holiday begins to sing. The last stanza Bruin describes how the blues are something you lose when true love comes along. The blues are a Bruin. When the moon's kind of dreamy, starry eyed and dreamy, and nights are luscious and long. If you're kind of lonely, and all by your own land Then nothing but the blues are brewing The blues are brewing When the wind through the willow Blows across your pillow And tells you sleeping is wrong if love goes a thirsting Till you feel like bursting Then nothing but the blues are brewing The blues are brewing Suppose you want somebody But you ain't got nobody you only got a gleam in your eye Till somebody's found you And puts their loving arms around you You got the feeling you want to die But when the Lord up above you Sends someone to love you The blues are something new Your soul is doing the things that you're doing that love ain't got no time for blue. The blue. All right, technology. So these are um, hard to find video clips. You can find them on YouTube, but obviously, um, people that had posted these clips took some time to curate them and get them rendered to the best that they can. This next uh, video, these actually these next three videos, uh, will feature the uh, Hulu special, United States versus Billy Holiday. Um, this next video is Billy's final message to Harry. Then we're going to go into uh, an interview uh, with Oprah Winfrey and the principal character that played principal actress that played Billie Holiday. And then we're going to come back. We're going to listen to this actress's rendition of 
of, 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 of strange fruit. So here we go with the, uh, this is the promo video for Hulu's United States v. Billie Holiday, which premiered February of 2021, I believe. Hello, sweetie. My wife is a big fan. She understands what you need. Billy and me discuss things. She hasn't been well, but she's sorry for the trouble she's caused, and she's ready to help. For the record, I'm going to need you to state your name. My name is Billie Holiday. Go on, lady. Go ahead and speak your piece. You're a victim of drugs. We know that. I don't blame nobody but myself. Go ahead and tell them what you need to tell them, baby. Miss Holiday, you want to clear your name, right? Get us off your case and you'll never see us again. You think I'm gonna stop singing that song? Your grandkids will be singing strange fruit. Y'all motherfuckers think y'all got something on me. You don't. You stupid bitches don't got shit on me. Suck my black ass. Okay, I did that on purpose so that you knew that I, I did pull this from Hulu, <clears throat> Hulu's page on YouTube. I'm not uh, intentionally trying to steal any copyright-owned uh, message, uh, but I do want to give credit where credit's due. And so a um, couple of things before we go to the interview with Oprah. It's only a two-minute interview uh, with this actress, Andra Day. Uh, it having spent the last 45 minutes or so, 50 minutes, um, exploring Billie Holiday, it was hard for me today, right now, walking through all of these videos with you, to realize that was not Billie Holiday's, and it wasn't Billie Holiday. Um, she ended up in the hospital, and the U.S. government came after her. Uh, they made the uh, coming after her <clears throat> a function of her drugs, uh, but the reality was they wanted her to stop singing Strange Fruit, and they wanted her to take take the um, the recordings out of circulation. And you heard her. <laughs> her response was, 
uh, classic. So let's uh, move on to this interview. Um, yeah, Oprah's interview with Andre Day. That's actually to answer your question, why I believe maybe this role came for me was really to heal me and to shake me of this idea of, of sort of self-sabotaging, of, of feeling constantly unworthy, constantly inadequate because I didn't have the right education or I don't feel like I'm smart enough. You know, she freed a lot of things in me, I will say. And how did she do that? Is it just the immersing in her story? Is it knowing the life that she lived and what yes. she had to go through? Yes, yes. And that is because... Uh, I, I think that, first of all, yes, the, just the experience of her, but it's because she showed up. I think that's a huge part, is that Billy had these feelings. She had, I'm sure she had fears. I mean, this, this woman's life was threatened every time she would get on stage and sing Strange Fruit, right? I mean, she was targeted, mm -hmm. she was harassed, she lost her father to Jim Crow, she was raped at a young age, she was sent into a brothel by her mother. I mean, and, and then she was constantly abused by men. I mean, she had her fears and she was a performer. So she knew what it was like to get on a stage and to be scared and terrified that the audience would not love you and you would not have that beautiful exchange. Um, but she showed up, she showed up for us. She showed up, she sang Strange Fruit. She showed up, she integrated audiences. She fought against the government. She showed up every single time. I mean, she had such a, for lack of a better term, a, a, like an effort attitude towards, okay, I'm scared, but I'm here and I'm present. And, and I think that being her, I, I was forced to show up. I had to show up for this role. I had to show up for Lee, for my cast, for what God was bringing me there to do, for Billy's spirit. Uh, and, and so just her ability to, to sort of almost throw caution to the wind and to be present and to show up was really, really just transformative for me. All right, this uh, second to last video, time permitting, it may be the last video, but um, it is um, the actress Andra Day's rendition of Strange Fruit. I want you to pay attention to the not only the filmography, but also her tonality and her characterization of Billie Holiday in the part that she took on. Southern trees, they're strange fruit, blood on the leaves and blood at the root, black bodies swinging in the sun. The breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. scene of the gallant south the bulging eyes and the twisted mouth scent of magnolia sweet And the sudden smell of burning flesh. Here is a fruit for the crows to pluck. To drop 
Here is a strange and bitter cry. Powerful, extremely powerful. You can find the original recording of uh, Billie Holiday's rendition of that uh, on YouTube. Um, unfortunately, there's no vi video there. It's just stock images of her um, uh, put against the recording. Last piece is the piece that introduced me to Billie Holiday in 1967. Uh, this is the cover uh, image from... Uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears' first album. For uh, I think it was their second album. This was the album that got them fame and uh, notarization. David Clayton Thomas singing God Bless the Child.
All right, we've come to the end of our time together this Friday. I hope that your soul has been fed and you've considered the meaning of every child's got to have his own. Come back and revisit us on Sunday at 1030 for worship. We continue with our creation spirituality series. We're looking at the ocean and the water on the world. Wednesday, Midweeks, we're looking at uh, mystics from the Middle Ages. And then Friday, we come back and we look at a living legend that passed earlier this week, Loretta Lynn. So, be well, do good, and go in peace. Thank you for your time and your attention. God bless each of you. <laughs>